Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Sumi Sukanya Datta and today we will discuss how we infer who is deficient in vitamin D and when we need supplementation for it. Why we are discussing it today is because a new study from India has suggested that unnecessary screening and vitamin D supplementation in the Indian population should be avoided. This has triggered a debate on the need to tailor the vitamin D range specific to the Indian population. To discuss this in detail, we have with us Dr. Rajiv Jayadevan, a veteran gastroenterologist and medical researcher from Kerala. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us in this conversation. And we'll start by asking you, could you please first tell us why is vitamin D necessary and who should take it? Vitamin D is not just a vitamin. In fact, it's a hormone. So that's an important distinction between vitamin D and all the other vitamins. So people tend to take the word vitamin casually and they think they can take a lot of it without having any side effects. Vitamin D is different. You can't take a lot of it because if you take a lot of it, you'll get what's called vitamin D toxicity and develop potentially serious complications. Now, the role of vitamin D, most people know it, it's a sunshine vitamin. Our skin is able to generate what we need if we get adequate sun exposure. Uh, it is essential for uh, bone health, and that's primarily the role of vitamin D uh, for to ensure adequate strength within our bones. And we know that in the years gone by, when uh, children uh, were malnourished and had severe vitamin D deficiency, they had bony deformities. And this is and we all grew up in the medical curriculum looking at these pictures of children with vitamin D deficiency. Such deficiencies have become uncommon with better nutrition. Now, vitamin D deficiency is basically a condition where you have a such a low level of the vitamin or the hormone in your body that your bone health has become abnormal. And that really is the problem with vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D also has other roles within the body, and there are studies linking it to multiple normal functionings of the human body. And some deficiencies and low levels have been correlated with certain disease conditions as well. Yeah. So why we are here today is because of this new study which has just been uh, published. So could you tell us what uh, what is the new thing that has come out in the study and what have we found? Yes. Historically, there has been much debate between um, uh, doctors uh, heading various academic institutions all around the world uh, about what a normal vitamin D level is. Now, that might sound a little strange to people who are just tuning in. We know what a normal blood sugar is. We know what a normal blood pressure is. Yes, there's no change between populations. But with vitamin D, it is not so simple. The vitamin D can be affected by how much sun exposure we get, uh, what kind of food we eat, what part of the planet we live in. Are we closer to the equator? Yes, we get a lot more vitamin D. What season are we living in? Are we living in winter? And what kind of clothes are we wearing? Do we have an indoor job or an outdoor job? All of these things can affect your vitamin D level. Now, the study from India was published in December 2023. It's in the, published in the Armed Forces Medical Journal. It looked at um, a group of perfectly healthy young adults of an average age of around 25. That's generally at the peak of somebody's health. And these are people who were perfectly healthy, who came for um, interviews and stuff like that. So they checked their vitamin D levels and they found that if you take a cutoff of 30 NG per mil, 30, then only 2% have normal levels. Now, how could that be? How could you have a perfectly healthy-looking population, group of youngsters, and find that only 2% are below the supposedly normal range of 30? Now, 30 is a level that's taken by many experts, and 30 is a level that's published by many labs as part of the normal range. Now, there are other experts. For, for instance, if you look at the Massachusetts General Hospital, uh, one of the top institutions in the world, um, if you look at Yale um, you know, uh, Yale Medical Now, all of them have different levels. Now, they have set a different level of 20 to be the lower limit of normal. And this paper from India suggests that 
even so I just said even lower limit could be the right thing for um, a country like India. We we have plenty of sun. Uh, we have um, we are closer to the equator. Uh, our diet is different, uh, and the, the this paper has suggested a much lower um, normal limit of vitamin D. That's up for debate. It needs to be confirmed by larger studies. The study from Jipa Pondicherry had suggested uh, that the um, the currently accepted, internationally accepted levels could be too high to be applied all over the world. So, in other words, for our for our viewers, I'll say this: How do you know, how do you calculate the normal value when we look at the lab result? We have a normal range, right? Have you ever wondered how we arrive at such a range? It's actually quite simple. Uh, you uh, you evaluate um, a group of people who are in good health and plot their values on a graph. Normally, the, the values will, will follow what's called a Gaussian distribution or a bell curve. You take the mean, that's the average, and then you take two standard deviations and the upper and lower limit of normal. So for example, the height, the average height in India is not the same as average height in Malaysia or in Germany. They're all different. But vitamin D level being a medical um, problem, uh, it must be more carefully um, evaluated uh, with other parameters. For example, is the level low enough to cause disease? Now, that is the part where experts are having difficulty in. What level uh, is actually causing bone disease? That, that may not be easy to ascertain because bone disease does not always cause symptoms. So you might, you might have a perfectly healthy looking person with abnormal bone. But it's hard to believe that robust young people of age 25, 98% uh, of them have abnormal vitamin D levels. So that uh, that calls um, for a re-evaluation of the supposedly normal range for the Indian population. Okay. So most of us, when we get our vitamin test done, for instance, our levels are lower, as you said already, uh, and we are prescribed a supplementation which lasts about two to three months. Is this the right approach? Uh, can we do something about it? Can we discuss this with our doctors, our physicians in detail and decide what to do? Now, there are two issues with this uh, statement you mentioned. Firstly, why would you check somebody who is in apparently normal health uh, to see the vitamin D level? There is absolutely no need to check a healthy person's vitamin D level. If you look at the standard guidelines, internationally acclaimed guidelines all around the world, there is no guideline that says you must screen somebody who is healthy for vitamin D level. So let's get that out of the way. So who do you test? Yes, if a person comes to me who has features that I suspect are potentially due to a problem with vitamin D, yes, that is when I perform the test. I would not um, want to order this test from someone who just walks in and says, doc, I would like to check on my health. Yes, of course, you do a fasting sugar, uh, you check their blood pressure, you check their weight, you check their abdominal circumference. Yes, that is, that's important. But, but vitamin D level, it is not necessary to be checked. The second part of your question is, what problems could occur with the supplements? Now, let me tell you this. Some of the vitamin D preparations in our market in India, they carry about 60,000 units, international units, uh, and they are to be taken once a week. Now, if the instructions are not very clear to the patient or the patient forgets uh, what was mentioned by the doctor or the pharmacist, the patient may inadvertently take it every day or even more frequently. Now, therein lies the problem. You could potentially, in, uh, you could potentially poison yourselves with vitamin D, uh, leading to extremely high levels and rarely can cause what's called hypercalcemia. In fact, that, that, uh, that sort of, uh, I, I sort of read a story somewhere that how a boy had died because of, you know, the, the vitamin D injections that uh, the boy received because the parents didn't know it was to be taken weekly and the boy was administered the injection daily. So uh, fatal, it can sometimes be fatal as well, right? Yes. This poisoning, vitamin D poisoning. True, uh, but I want, I want you to know that this is an extreme extremely rare occurrence. So it is not like if you pop a vitamin D, vitamin D pill, you're going to die from it. No, these are extremely rare occurrences. And the Mayo Clinic of uh, Minnesota, uh, Rochester, Minnesota, they have actually looked at uh, the occurrence of hypercalcemia 
secondary to vitamin D supplementation. They've, they've, con they've found that even though vitamin D levels are high in the population, very rarely do they come across hypercalcemia. So I just want, want to put it out there that this is not something that's going to kill you. Uh, but that does not mean that you should take it without reason. So that's uh, both, yeah. both, both points are important. Yeah, yeah. So do you actually think like the paper has suggested, the uh, the paper that we just discussed about tailoring the vitamin D range specific to the Indian population, do you agree to that view, point of view? Absolutely. The reason is, if you keep your normal range too high, let's say, if suppose I hypothetically say that the normal lower limit of height for Indians is six feet. Now, I'm nowhere near six feet. So neither are not are most, most people in our country. So 99% of Indians will be called short for no reason. So you should have a range which is customized to the population. As far as vitamin D level, uh, an elaborate study uh, needs to be done with larger numbers of individuals from different parts of the state, preferably mm -hmm. by, the, by a central agency, and correlate that with their bone health and see if below a particular level people are developing um, ill health of the bone. And then you set that level as the normal level for India. So that is, a, that is uh, that's possibly the better solution. Uh, it is unwise to adopt uh, Western levels of vitamin D of 30, 30 nanograms per mil for the whole of India, looking at all the literature that has arrived so far from India. Yeah. So that was about the over-diagnosis of vitamin D deficiency that we probably keep seeing. But do you think, you, we know that it's a sunshine a vitamin, so everybody can just go uh, out in the sun, get some sun and probably avoid this. But is there any other way through our diet to sort of uh, ensure that there's no uh, deficiency of this crucial vitamin? Yes. the In, in, in terms of um, dietary intake of vitamin D, um, if you look at the Western population, they get most of it through fortified foods. Their orange juice is fortified with vitamin D. Their milk is fortified with vitamin D. So when they consume the everyday products, yes, they do take, they do get some vitamin D. But otherwise, regular cow's milk is not a great source of vitamin D. Eggs, uh, meat, and uh, fatty fish like mackerel and uh, sardines, which are commonly used in India. Now these are these are inexpensive fish which are popular, and they are good sources as well. Uh, it, uh, small amounts of it are found in other food substances as well, but these are the chief sources. But that being said, our skin has the ability to convert uh, certain uh, substances in our body into vitamin D. But okay. uh, let's imagine a scenario where somebody spends most of their time indoors and are extremely reluctant to go out in sunlight. And if they are developing certain symptoms, I would really look carefully for vitamin D deficiency in such individuals. Okay. So are there any specific symptoms that you would, uh, you know, when you notice in a patient, you would advise them to get a test done? What are those symptoms, for instance? Yes. Yeah. These are uh, symptoms including pains in the limbs, which are difficult to describe, uh, a weakness in the muscles, difficulty in getting up from a squatting position or seating position without other reason. Of course, when people get older, they become frail and many people have these symptoms. People who've had a pneumonia or COVID might have some of these symptoms. But if you, if you are developing these symptoms, always it's better to check with your doctor uh, to see uh, what the cause of this problem is. It need not always be due to vitamin D deficiency, but in such individuals who have generalized weakness, muscle weakness, bone pains, yes, these individuals must be checked for vitamin D deficiency. This is one of the potential causes. Yeah. Any parting thoughts sir, on, uh, you know, uh, what should be the, the, is there a need to come up with a national sort of guideline on vitamin D management deficiency yes. detection? What do you think? Yes, definitely there, there has to be a national guideline. The Indian Academy of Pediatrics already has established guidelines for them the lower limit of normal is 20, which is more reasonable. Um, and um, for uh, vitamin D fortification, that's an area that uh, we need to look at more carefully because uh, if you look at, say, the Western population who live in colder parts of the world, uh, they tend to get a lot less sunlight in winter. So there are countries that recommend vitamin D supplements for their, for their citizens 
uh, uh, during winter time. So these are all thoughts uh, that we should try to apply to our population as well. And knowing that India is a very large country spanning multiple latitudes, uh, there are really cooler parts of India that did not receive as much sunlight. So uh, yeah. the study from India has to be done representing all parts of our country. Yeah, I get it. Thank you so much, sir, for this My very pleasure. insightful Thank conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you.